So uh, with that, welcome to June 3rd's meeting for the Coho City School District Board of Education. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order at six o'clock. Aaron, if you could pull up the flag for us uh, and if we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As a reminder, please send uh, all public comment to boecomment at cohoes.org. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn this over to our superintendent, Dr. Spring. Um, can I do a roll call? My bad. Um, Mrs. Giller? Excused. Uh, okay, Mr. Pascal? Here. Mrs. Annalee? Here. Mr. Jackson? Here. Mrs. Dion? Here. Mrs. Carey? Here. And Mr. Nolan? Here. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, Board of Education members, and welcome to all of our participants tonight. I see we're at 45 and growing, so we thank you for joining us, and uh, we're very grateful for your continued support. So we are ready for our presentation, Erin. Slide two. So here you see a big smiling face, and, and you may know her because she is famous. This is our, uh, our own Cohoes Quarantine Ferry. It's Josie Parker from Harmony Hill. And uh, she did something very special and, and it's really great. So, so thank you, Josie, a big shout out to you. And then also here on the right, you see two of our seniors at their athletic senior signing, uh, which Mr. Huno coordinated uh, last week. Uh, we have Hannah Ragul, who is going to uh, run track and field at Nazareth. And we have Megan LaPlante, who is going to play softball at Sage. So congratulations to all of our stars. Next slide, please. Joanna, could you just make sure to mute? I'm just getting a little bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, as our board president said, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us during this presentation and we will receive your email and answer them, of course. So we have lots of good news tonight. So on the board agenda, you will see the uh, acceptance of a $15,000 donation from HP Aruba, and this is for connectivity and hotspots in our community. So for us, it, we will have one in the high school parking lot, and we will have one in the middle school parking lot. And uh, I think it's a, it's a really good feature for, for some students who maybe don't have internet at home. Um, not that we want our kids hanging out in the parking lot, but uh, but we were excited that we were able to receive this and make this happen as adding two community hotspots. So, so we, we thank HP Aruba for that. End of year events, we have lots of wonderful events that I'm really excited to share with you. So first I'll start with the high school. So one of the favorite um, events each year, especially by uh, um, Matt Nolan, our board president, is the Science Symposium since he's an alum of that program. So that will be held Thursday, June 11th at six o'clock. Um, it will be a virtual event and students have videotaped their presentations and their research projects. So as you know, it's organized by our science uh, chair, teacher leader, uh, Mike Klotzko, and I'm excited to read the names to you. So we have our seniors presenting, Zach Alonzo, Caitlin Hebert, Megan LaPlante, Jana Rutska, Max Supernet and Kayla White. So kudos to those students and uh, we'll be looking forward to, to uh, seeing their virtual event. It will also be posted on our website. Student Scholars is happening Tuesday, June 16th at six o'clock. Again, um, that is a virtual event and it's mostly for underclassmen, some seniors as well, but mostly it's our award ceremony for our underclassmen. 
Senior awards will be held Thursday, June 25th at six o'clock. Again, that will be a virtual event. They are finalizing our award recipients uh, this week, and um, it will either be a Google Meet or some kind of pre-recorded video presentation. And students will uh, be given their um, honor medals during cap and gown, and we will mail home all of the uh, awards to the students. Graduation cap and gown pickup is Monday, June 22nd from four to six and uh, commencement ceremony. So, so first I, I really would like to call attention to uh, the dilemma this year. So first of all, we wanted to have an event that was, you know, rec that recognizes our students that celebrates all their accomplishments. Um, that also uh, abides by the executive order. So, so this year, definitely we were limited in our ability to be able to hold a traditional graduation. Um, there were a number of things that we had to consider. We had to consider, first of all, social gatherings um, of 10 or more are not allowed right now under the executive order. Um, uh, participants, uh, must attendees must wear masks social distancing, and just limiting the number of people who could be together. So our high school admin team worked really hard and, and teachers and planning an event that we feel um, satisfies the safety requirements while also uh, really recognizing our students. So they will be in um, the new gym, okay? We will have groups of 15 they will be scheduled to arrive uh, at the high school in half hour time intervals. It will begin um, at the same time graduation was scheduled to begin. That's Saturday, June 27th at nine o'clock. And family, our students will cross the stage that we're going to set up in the gym. Um, they will be able to have their family members there. They will receive a diploma. We will have our, our board of education members there. So the goal is not to exceed that 10 um, limit uh, for, for gathering um, and to obviously ensure everybody's safety. So we will live stream this. There will be a photo opportunity as well for, for our families and our graduates. We will have senior signs lining up the whole um, um, area outside of alumni field. And uh, there will also be a car parade which will occur that evening at six o'clock. So at the high school, we also have our athletic senior night, which is planned for Tuesday, June 9th at five o'clock. It will be a small trunk parade, followed by an opportunity for seniors to get a picture with their family on the field. At the middle school, the middle school promotion activities, there will be an eighth grade digital promotion ceremony and an eighth grade promotional walkthrough. So this is where students will have an opportunity to walk the campus grounds and personalize notes, uh, a big sign um, for their peers. So they'll be able to leave messages. Um, we have the Cohoes Common Council has donated gift bags for each student and the PTO has created photo stations. So, that, so that's great as well. Our elementary buildings are all having their moving up ceremonies on June 12th, starting at 10 o'clock. They will all be drive-through ceremonies where families will be able to get out of the car. They'll be receiving their certificates. They'll be able to see their teachers, um, see their principals, and they'll have photo op opportunities as well and they will be followed by a car parade. I know at Van Skyke they will have a car parade. Um, one cute, I mean, this is all wonderful, uh, but this is a cute idea from Abram Lansing. The teachers are delivering rocks um, and house paint to each student's home in fifth grade, and they're going to be de designing their own rock. They'll bring it with them, and that they're creating a fifth grade rock garden so that each one will leave a piece of them here at uh, Abram Lansing. Um, and as Mr. Bird says, and we have uh, left a little piece of us in you. So, so that, that's a, a nice message. So uh, any questions about the promotion ceremonies? 
Jennifer Tellen, um, I was wondering if you could just go over the high school graduation again. You said that there's we're limiting it to 10 inside, but I'm confused about who the 10 inside are going to be at oh, one God. time. Right, so you have the, the graduate, you have their family. Um, we will have the high, uh, Laura will have the high school principal and, and um, Laura Tarlow, the new principal and um, the board member. So it might be a little over 10 because we, um, and we'll have one board member at a time in there. We are trying to get to as close to 10 as possible, obviously. And we'll be in, in the large gym. Only one family will be in the, in the gym at a time. They will enter from the outside into the gym and then they will exit again right from the gym to the out, outside. So that's how we're, we're controlling it. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll also be in there. I'll also okay. be in there. Thank you. Any other questions on the promotion ceremonies or graduation? Okay, we're ready for the next slide. So let's see here, executive order. So the only thing that is new here, so we know that summer school is virtual, but what was a surprise this uh, week was that summer camps can open in person, face-to-face, -face, June 29th. So that was a big question that, that I was asked this week. Why can summer camps be face-to-face -face but not summer school? So I do not have the answer to that question. But what I can tell you at a previous board meeting, it did come up that uh, families had asked about the TSL summer camp. And I did speak with TSL today. They do have a summer camp that is happening in Lansingburg. So it's still closed for our families. They've been planning it for, for uh, quite uh, some time. So, so that is an option for our families. We will not have any summer camps on our campus this summer, but that um, is an option for our families. Um, digital uh, equity survey. So the state um, education department this week issued um, a digital equity survey that we will be completing by building. And they're asking for a lot of information. Most of this information we already have. Um, it's about devices that we've distributed to students. They, they want to know that information. They're interested in knowing how many of our students have devices in their homes already. How many are even shared by multiple members of the family? They're interested in knowing about student internet access, teacher home access, barriers, okay, to access. So for us, that's really cost. Cost, as you know, is a, a huge barrier. And also, so purchasing and also replacing um, old devices. So, so that's a challenge and a challenge for many of our families is having home internet. Um, so that's what that report is and we'll be working on that um, in the next week. So here's the big question. All right, school budget vote, where is my ballot? So we've asked, we've been asked that question a lot uh, today. So ballots were mailed out um, this past Monday at the latest. And I did get confirmation from BOCES that that did occur. So the challenge is that these ballots must be received by us by 5 p.m. on June 9th, which is Tuesday. Not a lot of turnaround time. We are aware of that. So we have established a locked drop box, cemented to the ground so nobody can take it away. And it, it will be located in front of our district office at 21 Page Ave. Residents can drive up, they can drop off their ballot, whether or not the building is open, um, they don't have to enter the building. Um, you know, and so, so we thought that would be um, easy. That would be an, an easier solution for, for our residents. So ballots will be counted on June 10th and the result will be communicated immediately following and the Board of Education will certify the results of the Canvas on June 10th at 6 o'clock. So, so I, I'm sorry, but we do need to have a quick meeting next Wednesday night, very quick, just so that the Board can certify the results. So one thing, I don't know if you can see, but I do have um, my budget newsletter. So I did receive this in the mail today. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get my ballot today, but I'm hoping I get it tomorrow. 
Are there any questions about the vote? I know that we heard from Sue Dion who said she knows one community resident member who did receive his or her ballot today. So we know they're out there. They're in the process of being delivered. But are there any questions about, uh, about the vote? Can you just um, quickly talk about how to complete the ballot? There's so many things that invalidate it. We just want to make sure that uh, everyone has an understanding of what they can and can't do. Yeah, so we do have a, a Q and A about this on our website. Um, I think the biggest thing that we have seen through the years is that people don't sign it. Um, and if they don't sign it, it's not a valid ballot and we cannot count it. So I think I would like to caution um, all of our, our voters to make sure you sign it. We have two um, members who are running for two open seats. Um, so we ask that you please vote for that. We have no other um, resolutions on um, um, or on the referendums on the ballot, um, just whether or not they're allowing us to uh, spend, um, you know, the tax levy amount. Stacy, did you want to add anything else to that? But I think the big thing is signing it. Jennifer, I'd like to add that Joe? they don't sign the actual ballot. They sign the oath. Envelope. envelope. Okay, thank you. Just so they right. you know. Okay. So there's a right, there's a, a envelope that needs to be signed. Um, and then the ballot is completed. There there are two action items. One is for board seats and the other is for the for the budget. Uh, so they will uh, make their selections for those two items and then they would seal it in the envelope and there is no postage needed um it's uh prepaid postage and they're welcome to drop it off at 21 page app if they don't feel right. comfortable at any time the deadline is uh june 9th at 5 p.m correct so for for people that um going to try to mail this in what are their chances well again we have to receive them first right so it might be better if residents drop it off at 21 page app so we will have it ready tomorrow for residents to drop it off um, well i understand the dilemma mark because if they put it in the mail and there's a some kind of delay in the mail then their vote may not be counted. So the, the post, I haven't been to the post office since all this started. Are they staffed normally or are there, are there people? They're understaffed and remember they just did the Albany County. You've all just received the notice from Albany County about the request to receive a ballot in that primary election. Um, and then we've sent out again, the number of mailings, you know, our, our budget newsletter, our postcard, they've been very, very busy with us. I, I know that. So do we ask, or sorry. Um, so I was just wondering where, where they were being mailed from. Um, what, like, where was the, you know, printing of them and wh where do they get mailed from? Is it, so you know, uh, it's Joanna, I think they, they were mailed from colony, correct? My understanding was they were mailed from Colony. Yeah, that doesn't give me much hope that it's, you know, it'll be any faster getting it internally from co-host to co-host, but maybe. Um, Jennifer, it's Helen. Are we sure that it has to be in by the 9th, not just post dated by the 9th? It has to be in by received by 5 p.m. on June 9th, unless okay. the governor decides to uh, change that. But uh, I don't believe um, that that will be the case. Okay. Postmarked, but actually it needs to be received. So if someone oh, were to bring, were to put this in their mailbox tomorrow, and it's postmarked uh, by the, the fifth, say, um, but for some reason it, it doesn't, it's not received by the ninth, it doesn't count. Correct. Sorry, it's Helen again. Have we communicated with Capital Region BOCES that this has been an issue? It, they were all mailed on by Monday, so that's that. That was the end of their responsibility to get them mailed. Okay. 
Um, so they've, they've uh, assured all, every single school district that they have all been mailed. I mean, but like, what's the, how's the chain back up to the governor to let them know that there might be an issue with people getting it in on time? Yeah. Well, so every step of the way, this wasn't the, the first choice of superintendents. Um, so every step of the way, we have been communicating all of the challenges under this um, executive order. Very difficult, okay. very expensive, um, very difficult, and, um, you know, and, and you can see that it's still not perfect. Right. Okay. You can also contact our, you know, NISBA representation um, and make sure that they're, you know, lobbying on our behalf. I mean, ultimately, the, the mailing. Typically, a, a bulk mailing like that will go to like a central hub, like a colony, but it does have to go through the Cohoes post office. So do we know if if it's reached the, the Cohoes post office yet? So I know Stacy was trying to call them all day um, and I'm not sure she was able to get through. I tried to call them at 2.30. It was because there was some miscommunication that we thought that some folks had received ballots. So when, um, when it was discovered that the people that we thought received ballots did not receive ballots, I called between 2.30 and 3 o'clock and it said, um, to hold on the line for a representative, it rang, and then I was disconnected. So, um, I'll try again tomorrow. But, so I tried to call between 2.30 and 3 o'clock today. And Sue also had a person that did get one today, so that has to come out of Cohoes. So they're there. I just don't know what's happening. So, and we can have Aaron again, I, Aaron's already updated the website about the lock box, the drop box, that that is an option for residents and we can make sure that we continue to communicate that. Good yeah, if, if we that, get, that could be the only option. Yeah, if we get down to the wire where all of a sudden it seems like most of the people we've communicated with aren't receiving these ballots until Thursday or, or Friday, We'll have to send out a message to everyone through all of our communications channels saying that we strongly recommend, you know, dropping them off directly as opposed to trying to get them through the mail. Just to ensure that your your vote counts. Okay, next slide, please, Aaron. Okay, next slide. Very good. Okay, so um, our plan to reopen schools, or we can call it return to learning, because we definitely want to make sure learning is at the forefront of of everything and every decision that we're making. So we have um, we're still in the process of of assembling our district wide committee. Our meeting is scheduled for June 18th. I'm still looking for um, um, an elementary and a middle school teacher. I just I uh, was able to um, have a high school teacher who, who volunteered, also looking to have a cleaner on the committee as well. Um, we do have um, a parent rep, we have a student rep. Um, I have three board members, so, so thank you. We have, we have Rick, we have Margaret, and we have Sue who will be on this, com this committee. So, so thank you and, and more information to, to follow and hopefully more guidance from um, New York State Education Department, as well as our governor on the parameters. Wait, wait, go back, go back, hold on. Um, and we also have established building level and special area committees, and they are beginning to meet. Some have been meeting. And again, we have guiding questions. The guiding questions that we're really examining and discussing have to do with student learning gaps, social distancing, and wellness screening, and uh, BOCES was able to develop a wellness screening app that uh, goes that a, um, an employee could uh, certify him or herself each day. And that is something we are exploring as far as, um, you know, for, for our staff members and possibly high school students, but definitely for staff members. Ensuring the safety in, of staff and students obviously is paramount. Um, so, um, um, ordering supplies, equipment, determining what PPE we need and how we are going to maintain cleanliness 
activities, events. That's what our building teams are, are discussing as well and uh, mental health. So each building will be um, submitting a plan to address student mental health and staff mental health. Um, next slide, please. Peggy? Um, yeah, uh, so reports will be mailed to students and parents on June 23rd. Um, as you know, we were part of a regional approach organized by Capital Region BOCES. We met with districts throughout the region and then with our administrative and teacher teams. As part of grading, we've taken into consideration the challenging times faced by students and parents during this virtual schooling. Um, the elementary schools will be sending third trimester reports with priority standards marked as evidence of learning or not yet learned, as well as not yet assessed if a teacher was unable to get to a certain priority standard, and then previously assessed if this had been um, assessed prior to, to closing, as well as a short narrative. At the middle school and high school, again, the fourth quarter is evidence of learning not yet learned. And then for final scoring, um, it'll be 40% uh, for the first quarter, 40% for the second quarter, 20% for the third quarter, knowing that we were only face to face uh, with the students for a, a shorter amount of time. And then an adjustment for the fourth quarter, evidence of learning or not yet learned, um, where if students were um, consistently submitting work, meeting uh, standards, um, then that uh, final grade can be adjusted upwards. Um, any final failing averages will um, for now be converted to uh, incompletes and um, we're coming up with plans to address those uh, on Friday in the weekly update. We, we will send you the, the full document for this. Um, in terms of virtual summer programming, the SUNY tutoring program that's held every summer at um, Abram Lansing is moving virtual. Um, their uh, SUNY students in the Masters of Reading program will be tutoring 30 of our elementary students uh, from the three schools, and um, we're working out details with Dr. Cheryl Dozier uh, right now. There will be extended school year uh, summer program. That's for our students in our self-contained classrooms who show significant regression after breaks in instruction, um, and they have summer programming on their IEPs. So, so this, this happens every year, it will be virtual. There's a high school section, a middle school section, and three elementary sections. So this program is funded up front and then reimbursed uh, by the state when uh, we submit the, the stack forms. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about um, high school programming. We have started some discussions on what could this look like for high school students who have received incompletes and will need to make these up to receive course credit? Um, if, because if these are not made up over the summer, then the students would need to be in credit recovery or some other form of AIS during the school year, which would then impact their schedule. They would not be able to take uh, as many uh, of the next grade level courses, and it would also impact our scheduling. So we understand that these students um, have been struggling in the, in the virtual world. So we're looking at some different models, some ways that we would be able to um, connect more, check and connect more with these students over the summer. And we have our next meeting on June 8th, and that's, and I, that's the time when we'll also have a much better idea of the students numbers because any third quarter incompletes by then will have will be in the system and we can we can rerun our reports. Um, Chromebook drop off for the high school. It's the week of the 22nd for the middle school, uh, June 18th and the 22nd and for the elementary on June 15th. Um, Sylvie, the buildings and Mary Rumsey are cross referencing lists right now so that any of our students in the tutoring program or summer programming that do uh, need Chromebooks will still will still have will still have their Chromebooks. And um, we're also uh, in the process of developing an elementary summer learning activity site 
uh, that thanks to uh, Jen San Giacomo broken down by grade level. So that will be posted on our website with English language arts and math activities, physical activities, music activities, um, you know, and, and suggestions, not just computer, uh, but other activities that um, students can do, you know, not, not virtually. And then finally, we are planning for our superintendent conference days on the 15th and 16th. We'll be having department and grade level and building meetings. Um, part of the agenda will uh, be talking about reopening considerations, discussions on how to best meet and identify uh, learning gaps, how to differentiate instruction next year. Um, and then uh, again, we will share that agenda with you when it's when it's finalized. Are there any questions? Thank you, Patty. Stacy, good evening. This is Stacy. Yes. Uh, so, New York State budget under COVID-19. I did uh, go ahead and call Questar State Aid Planning today to make sure that we had the most up-to-date information as possible. As this information tends to uh, change uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the first bullet point regarding the measurement periods is really just a reminder only. We don't have any new information here. Uh, the first measurement period concluded April 30th, with the second measurement period ending June 30, and the final and the third period uh, defined as July 1 through December 31st. I will say that uh, we did receive our May state aid payment, and there was no reduction. Uh, so that was good news. The federal CARES restoration. Uh, so there was a line item on our final state aid run, uh, just under $600,000. And that is uh, federal stimulus money uh, that New York State is actually going to have to uh, submit a plan for. The state plan is due July 1. And then each school district will go through an application process, and that's likely to be available uh, on the, the portal that we do all of our state reporting. The third item, the HEROES Act. Uh, so this is a federal stimulus pack. Uh, no update on this information. Uh, but this would be state financing uh, to soften the curb of a New York State and the impact on the New York State finances. Uh, so this would not be funding, or it's, it's not expected to be funding that would go to schools directly. Instead, uh, it would be used uh, in an effort to minimize any adjustments um, through the measurement period process. So again, that would not be direct funding uh, to school districts, it would be actually to New York State. Okay, next slide, please. So just some business office updates. We have been conducting, uh, we started uh, two of our audits. Uh, we have an annual risk assessment process. That's with Michael Wolf, advisory services. So he conducted all of his uh, interviews with uh, stakeholders at the district uh, virtually. Uh, we did send him whatever we could electronically, and then he did pick up a box here uh, at the office at Page Avenue. Uh, so I would expect to have a report of our annual you know, risk assessment this summer. Uh, we have started the uh, preliminary field work with Marvin and company. We started that uh, probably about two weeks ago. So that goes into May and June. Uh, we were able to provide most of the information um, uploading to their, to their site, their secure site. Uh, they did have a couple binders that they needed to pick up uh, for grants, et cetera. The financial audit is scheduled uh, for the week of August 17th, and the preliminary audit committee meeting I have on their books for September 29th. So um, those are the preliminary dates. Uh, we've been very busy with bids. We do have the Harmony Hill uh, boiler deadline. It's uh, this Friday. And we do have uh, our copy paper, our general supplies, and our custodial supplies have all been 
um, advertise and, and sent to uh, vendors who have requested the bids. The deadline for that will be June 12th. Um, I'm also um, working on compiling information for capital region vote fees for uh, shared services for uh, bus routes. So I'm in the, in the process of completing a spreadsheet and sending that on. Um, we also have financial projections. Uh, when COVID uh, first began, I had worked with our financial advisor, Rick Timms, uh, to update some of the uh, projections. And I will look to finalize that based off of June actuals and have an updated um, forecast for the board uh, this summer. Um, so probably the later July board meeting. Uh, we are trending very favorably due to the closure. We have experienced savings in several areas. Uh, so we did have a planned deficit. Um, we, we should not have a deficit. It looks like we'll be uh, slightly positive. So we're trending very favorably. So uh, it'll be better news than what we had shared uh, in the fall. Any questions for me? Thank you for the update, Stacey. Thank you. And on tonight's agenda, uh, you will see our tenure awardees. Uh, so we congratulate all 19 of our tenure recipients. I'm very proud uh, to name each one of them. So from Harmony Hill, we have Danielle Zabrowski, Erlene Mayo, Jenna Howe, Kaylee Hall, Tracy Gressis, Brenda Geis, Megan Galarno, Kimberly Sestero, Brianna Houle, Brittany Dawson. And from the middle school, we have Jacqueline Penny. From Abram Lansing, we have Nick Izo and Jen Cruschetti. From the high school, we have Jackie Calabrese. We, uh, Jackie Calabrese Bergala. I'm sorry, some of the married names weren't, weren't put on the board agenda. Um, Chris Fournier, Keith Fisher, Lydia Cappadonia, Samantha Simmons, and Dominic Bondi. So a big congratulations to all of these teachers. They are our future. They have definitely demonstrated that they are Cohoes proud um, and that they they know the Cohoes way. So so we're very proud. And again, if you have questions, please email us and, and we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. I did want to also point out we have a um, retirement from Nancy LaForest. So I just wanted to uh, thank her for her service to the district. And I also wanted to thank, uh, we're acting on a lot of the um, layoffs that are necessary due to our budget. And just again, thank you to all those individuals that were impacted. Uh, there's wonderful people and uh, employ wonderful employees, wonderful individuals um, uh, and families that are all impacted by this. So thank you again for their dedication and service to our students. And, uh, you know, we, we're doing everything that we can to support you that uh, given the situation that we're in. I do have a comment from the community if there are no um, board comments. Oh, I just wanted to say real quick that um, I'm speaking with a friend who uh, has a family member that works for the Coe's post office and that family member is going to check first thing in the morning to see if maybe we can get a little bit more information about the ballots. So thank you to that family member of a friend. <laughs> May I ask a question about graduation? Um, Dr. Spring, how does the, how, how is it decided? Well, are all the seniors and their families in the parking lot socially distancing and what so, board member goes in? When, I'm kind of confused on how, okay. how this is working. So they have scheduled times. I heard that. I when they will, um, line up in their cars and then one family at a time 
will enter the gym. Okay, and on the stage will be Mr. Wood, Mrs. Tarlow, I'll be on the stage and a board member. So the student will walk the stage and then with his or her family, they will take a picture. The student graduate will receive his or her diploma and um, then they will be uh, they will be leaving the gym. So that's what the that's what it looks like. And then we'll rotate board members in. That's my question. Yeah. So where will we be to be rotated in? How do we know when we go in? So you'll be in front and we can have you, you know, hold signs for congratulating our, our graduates. And, and so uh, again, we're bringing in 15 at a time. So maybe we divide it. Um, each board member will do 15 and then we'll, you know, schedule you as well into the gym. Um, and in the meantime, you'll be out in front and, and maybe in so, but it is a long, it's going to be long. So, uh, this process will be much longer than the two hours we're used to. So, yeah, are we allowed to sit in chairs and hold signs as opposed to oh, stand? No, 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 no. We will absolutely make you comfortable. We'll have water for you. Um, we don't know. It might be a very hot day. We, we hope we have nice weather. So, absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I know Jennifer alluded to this, but it is going to be uh, a long day. So, you know, that is not, uh, you know, by any means a requirement that board members are there for the entire time. We can um, divvy it up into shifts. I think there's a lot of ways we can um, make this work. Um, obviously, people will want to be there as, as long as they can, but um, it, it's going to uh, it's going to be six or seven hours, I would guess, at, at easy. So Brian has I would, it timed at five hours. So so we hope it's. I think that's optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so would we be given sure. time slots if we couldn't be there the whole time? We can do that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my that? first inclination. Okay, I. But that's up to us to figure out as as a board. We can um. We can divvy that up as we wish. It's we're available for us to at least one of us to be there in the room if we want to be. How we organize that is is in, in the past at the ceremonies we've just kind of um, you know when I first was on the board it was um, the president did handed them all out and then we decided that was a little weird so we divvied it up amongst the whole board and it was just sort of ad hoc um, you know we rotated through a stack or two and then we said okay it's time for the next person but I think in this case we can try to be a little bit more um, you know designed about Who's when? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This this may come through is a is a question a community question, but I want to ask it just in case. Uh, could 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 anyone pick up a ballot? I know, I know this there's staffing restrictions at the at Page. But could someone go down tomorrow if they're if they want to be sure they're going to get it and, and pick one up? Uh, Mark, each person can only receive one ballot, and since they've already been dropped off and mailed, that would not assure that because then they could submit several ballots. So that's why they do that, I think. And we're not Chicago, right? <laughs> the the community question um, that I got was if the you know process of returning them in the mail is an obstacle, uh, and the community member, I guess, is more of a comment, but the community member felt that if they were postmarked by you know the eighth or ninth, that they should count. And I think that's typically how elections are are held, but in this case, that is not how the order reads, unfortunately. So I I agree that that is how they should count if it's postmarked by the date, but um, that's not how the executive order is currently written. It's everyone's understanding. That's correct. That's correct. It seems seems all a little crazy. So, <laughs> so I think that is something that um, you know I will reach out to if the board agrees. I reach out to NISBA and just make sure. I'm sure they're already lobbying on that issue, but I'll just make sure that they're uh, doing that. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, 
I don't have any other comments from the community. Are there any other comments from the board before we uh, accept a, a motion for our um, consent agenda? I'll make a motion, Talon. I'll second it, Sue. Mr. Pascal? Yes. Mrs. Annaly? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mrs. Dion? Yes. Mrs. Carey? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Um, I did want to comment quickly. I wanted to thank uh, Dr. Spring for um, leading our communication effort regarding the kind of recent ongoings and everything. I know it, is, it struck me as I was reading the, the pledge about justice for all, and that certainly seems that not the case at the moment for many individuals in the country. So again, um, thank you, Dr. Spring, for helping coordinate that letter to our community. And I hope folks will, families will avail themselves to the resources that are on there to have discussions. Um, as appropriate and reflect on however we can make this a country that it does have justice for all. Thank you, Matt. And to continue the discussion, you know, in our community, at our board meetings and in our schools. Um, I just wanted to, this is, we're done with the agenda part, right? I can say the other stuff. Um, so, um, I've been trying to get a hold of masks for the district. I know that I kind of communicated that with you. Um, somewhere along the line, Paul Murray and Sean Quell at Gents Barbershop heard that I was looking for them and gave me a box full of 600 masks that they donated to the district. So I will get those to you down at Page Ave as soon as possible so you can hopefully get them to our families that need them. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Helen. It wasn't me, all them, which I too, just thanks so much to those two guys that didn't like stepped up for our district. It's just, it's a fantastic thing. Thank you. So. Uh, you could maybe snap a photo of those before you drop them off. Um, I can do a social media post or something just to, just to thank them and, and let people know. That would be great. Thank you. If you just want to make sure that they're, uh, you know, appropriate getting, they would like to get thanked, then we can do that. <laughs> hey, I, I, I already spoke to them. I think it's okay, okay. that. Fantastic. We're thanking them. Uh, are, any other comments from board members on anything at all? Our, uh, I know on the uh, agenda it's listed as the 17th, but we do have a, a quick meeting to certify the results of the election on the um, next Wednesday. Oh, 10th, thank you. I'm going to say the 11th for some reason, but uh, next Wednesday on the 10th, and that'll be at 6 o'clock. And uh, after that, we have a follow-up regular meeting at June 17th, uh, also at 6 o'clock. And uh, with that, I do not believe there is any need for executive session. And I'll ask for a motion to adjourn at 648. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Mr. Pascal. Yes. Mrs. Annaly? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mrs. Dion? Yes. Mrs. Carey? Yes. And Mr. Nolan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you very much.